The Intel 10th Gen Core i9 10,900 ES desktop CPU with 10 cores and 20 threads has been acquired and benchmarked by XFastest, which is another news tech site. And they actually made a video showing the whole benchmark thing in action. Very cool. In today's video, we're going to look at pricing, performance, and release date for Intel's 10th Gen CPU lineup. And Intel is yet again, to no surprise, resurrecting the 40 nanometer Skylake architecture, now giving us more cores and slightly higher clock speed. And yes, as a sweet bonus I guess, we have been seeing evidence of these CPUs getting pretty toasty. Now remember we are looking at a Core i9 processor that is marked ES and usually you see a K here or an F or even a KF in some cases. ES is stands for engineering sample which means that this exact CPU won't be sold to you and me and apparently it turns out that this processor is significantly slower than what the final specification suggests and so it seems like they are testing a very early engineering engineering sample here. feel like this information is worth having in mind as we move forward. But yeah, what's so interesting here is that this shows the Core i9 10900 in action. And if you're interested what Intel got in mind for us, I think you would enjoy this video today. Yeah, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about the Intel's upcoming Comet Lake architecture, which marks Intel's 10th series of CPUs for desktop. Hey, what is up guys? My name is Robin, your Swedish host with bad posture and poor accent. Let's kick this off by taking a look at the specifications. All right, so what we can see first and foremost we find different with the upcoming Core i9 is the core count and thread count. As we can see here the upcoming Comet Lake Core i9 processor is receiving an additional 2 cores giving us a total of 10 cores and 20 threads and if we take a look at the current Core i9 9900 we're seeing 8 cores and 16 threads. Now the 10900 comes with a base clock speed of 2.8 which is fairly low but keep in mind this is not the K model. Anyway it's got a boost clock speed up to 5 gigahertz, 5.1 gigahertz with turbo boost max and 5.2 gigahertz with thermal velocity boost and keep in mind this is not the K model and so this processor does not come with overclocking and this chip features 20 megabytes of cache and has a TDP of 65 watts. Anyway despite the TDP value here this processor is going to be pretty toasty regardless. That is at least what the recent rumors suggest. Now in comparison the current Core i9 9900 got a base clock of 3.1 and a turbo of 5 gigahertz so we are actually seeing a slight decrease in the base clock here which is a step backward in terms of performance and this is a bad sign but to be fair we are getting two more cores so that's probably the reason why I guess. As we take a look at the benchmark an important takeaway here is that the ship that XFastest has acquired is an engineering sample and comes with a lower base clock of 2.5 gigahertz. It also turns out that the engineering sample also ran in a much lower boost frequency of just 3.2 gigahertz and this was the boost frequency on all cores and 20 threads and they were seeing 4.4 gigahertz boost in one single core workloads and so in other words it seems like they are working with a very early engineering sample and the performance on this chip should not be compared to final product which launches in a few months time. Now if we take a look at the numbers in the benchmark the ship scored 1670 points points in multi-thread and 182 points in single thread in Cinebench R15 benchmark. Now in Cinebench R20 the same CPU scored 3714 points within multi-thread and 441 points in single thread tests. And if we were to compare this with current Core i9-9900, according to CPU Money, this processor is seeing a 1900 points in multi-thread and 219 points in single thread in R20 for multi core we're getting 4346 and 518 in single threaded and so as we can see here the older processor is doing a lot better now keep in mind the processor that they are testing here is an engineering sample and apparently an early engineering sample so that explains the poor results although the benchmark is not much to brag about what's so interesting is the fact that the processor still managed to reach temperatures up to 68 C or Celsius which is quite hot for a ship running at these uh, frequencies and one can only imagine what the temperatures would look like with the final clock speeds and this is quite alarming I would say and it definitely seems like Comet Lake will be a toasty lineup from Intel and this is obviously not very good news at all. Now WCCF Tech is reporting that final variant would likely surpass the Core i9-9900K when it comes to single and multi-thread performance. Now, here's something to have a 
mind, the only argument for picking Intel at this point has been slightly higher clock speed. And if these processors turn out to be as toasty as it seems, seeing higher clock speed and 5 gigahertz, especially in all cores, could actually be quite rare on these processors. With that in mind, let's jump over to pricing. How much can we expect Intel to ask for these processors? As of right now, AMD pretty much already got us covered in the CPU department. And currently, the Ryzen 9 3900X is hands down the best chip to get under $500, offering 12 cores and 24 threads with excellent single core performance and tons of multi-threaded horsepower. And I think Intel has to be very price aggressive with Comet Lake and asking anything above $400 for the Core i9-10900 series would in my opinion be a hard buy to any consumer who are already thinking about switching to AMD in this generation. And we actually got some earlier reports coming in regarding pricing and several 10th Gen Comet Lake processors being listed by retailers. So let's take a look at it. Now this was spotted by Memento Us on video cards and WCCF Tech is reporting about this. The prices are mentioned are currently pre-listings which are usually inflated prior to official launch and these prices are expected to fall down further and match the original MSRP for each CPU during launch. And the important takeaway here is that these Czech and Slovakian stores show prices that are up to 15 euros higher than the predecessor of the respective CPU. Core i5-10600 for example is listed for around 279 euros while the Core i5-9600 is listing at the same store for 264. And judging from these early signs, it seems like Intel is trying their best to keep the same price structure as they have been doing with their existing processors, which is probably only going to lead to even more people switching to AMD in the upcoming months ahead. And so guys, I don't know what to say, but the 10th series doesn't look very promising to say the least at the moment. Anyway, in addition to this, I got another interesting leak or story as well if you like, and this is regarding Intel's Core i7-10700F apparently showing promising performance and the leaked performance data indicates that the Core i7 model is getting similar performance as the AMD Ryzen 3700X. And this is a model that's been flowing under the radar so I figured it would be interesting taking a look at it. Now keep in mind the F at the end stands for absence of integrated graphics unit and the model looks to be a direct replacement for the Core i7 and 9700F. We got an 8 core processor here with a modest 2.9 GHz base clock and this has also been tested on the Korean community site uh, in Cinebench R20 and the result lands at 4781 points with all 16 threads active and 492 points for, for the single thread test and also something to have in mind when it comes to the 10th series uh, apart from the fact that Intel takes the step over to 10 cores now is that we need a new socket yes that's right we gotta need a new LGA 1200 socket which is requiring a new motherboard which is also another downside and speaks to how serious the situation currently is. I think if Intel doesn't get the pricing right the 10th gen is pretty much doomed for failure. Anyway guys I would love to hear your thoughts here. I think Intel needs to rethink the pricing based on the information we got so far. I don't think that many people would buy this or even recommend this uh, processors at all. Anyway guys I would love to hear your take on this. I watched either of these two videos and I will see you guys over there. I want to thank you so much for sticking around this long and I will see you guys in the next one.